talking about his work on OpenCV. Welcome, Bo. Um, hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Thanks for showing up. Uh, I know it's the end of, uh, get coming toward the end of LCA, and we're all really tired. So I'll try to keep this as um, fast-paced as possible. <laughs> um, this is my first LCA presentation, and it's also my first day of PhD candidature, so uh, here at the ANU, so please be gentle. Um, okay, so today I'll be talking about lighting up OpenCV with NE10 and NEON. Um, so this work's been conducted by uh, myself, Bo, uh, Gurav Mitra, who I share an office with, and my supervisor, Alastair Rendell. Okay. So, when we're talking about lighting up OpenCV, uh, we mean improve image processing performance for ARM-based mobile devices. And so OpenCV is an open source image processing library. Uh, and we'll talk about that more a little later on. But the interesting thing is, um, OpenCV has been heavily, uh, lately, that there have been a lot of Intel optimizations um, for the OpenCV library. But uh, most, most modern mobile devices use ARM processors. And a lot of these devices um, have high-resolution cameras, and, and there are a lot of apps to, to perform image processing. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of these um, yeah, Android applications or iOS applications will be using uh, ARM processors. But uh, the OpenCV library hasn't, hasn't, doesn't have a lot of these SIMD optimizations uh, occurring. Okay. So uh, we'll be talking about NEON and NE10 libraries, um, and they're used to improve performance on ARM processors. They're not commonly used as tools by the developer, and I'll discuss that a little bit later. Okay, so, so the overall benefit is if we improve performance of the OpenCV library um, using SIMD, we should be able to improve efficiency and improve battery life, life for these devices. Um, and also, by reducing con computation time, we can do um, we can do more, so we can run heavier apps, do, um, do, do things like feature detection, or uh, uh, auto so, so automated uh, detection or classification of flora or fauna, or any, any sort of image app. Um, then when you're more creative than me, you might be able to come up with a better example. <laughs> um, okay, so the history of the project. It was originally started by uh, Open Parallel. Uh, so that's a company in New Zealand. And it basically started immediately after Multicore World, um, which is a conference. It's actually started every year. So it's on in two, uh, in two weeks' time in Wellington. And you should consider going. So a lot of fun. And uh, you learn a lot from it. Um, OK, so it's focused on, so the project itself is focused on, was originally focused on NE10 for media processing. Um, it ended up as a side project at, at the ANU, here at the ANU, in the College of Engineering and Computer Science, where we dug deeper dug deeper with NEON, and I'll explain why we did that soon. Um, so the OpenCV project was started by Intel in 1999, and it's now, so it's a GitHub repository, and it's completely open source, uh, and it's maintained by ITSIS and Willow Garage. Okay, so the things I'll talk about, I'll briefly introduce OpenCV, uh, uh, SIMD, Single Instruction Multiple Data, and uh, NE10 and NEON. And I'll briefly compare any 10 to NEON to identify which will best light up OpenCV. So how can we optimize OpenCV for ARM-based processors? So we'll examine the structure of the OpenCV library. Um, and basically, we'll, we'll skim through uh, the, the, the core. So a, there are several modules in OpenCV. And we'll look at the core module and the convert function. Uh, image processing. Uh, there's, a, there's an image proc module. And in the image proc module, we'll look at uh, binary thresholding. And we'll also uh, briefly skim, we'll take a bird's eye view of the filter engine. Um, so for some of the deeper level stuff, we'll, we'll inspect the algorithm, propose a theoretical speed up from using SIMD. Um, and we'll look at the C source and different intrinsic implementations. And hopefully, we'll, I'll, I'll uh, convey why we should use hand code intrinsics and to give some take home notes for the developer. OK, so uh, what is OpenCV? Open Computer Vision is an open source library to perform image, pro image processing. Contains about 400 commonly used image processing functions, uh, mostly used in computer vision. Um, and so many Android and iOS apps perform image processing using this OpenCV library. So let's make it fast for ARM processors. Again, uh, so it's a framework written in C with a C++ high-level interface. 
Okay, so let's start off by what is SIMD? Uh, so single instruction, multiple data. So I'll walk you through a typical example. Say, in OpenCV, without calling a, a low-level function in OpenCV, um, if you were to do this by hand, say you wanted to increase the pixel intensity of every element by two. Um, okay, so. so we have our ordinary CPU. So this is not the SIMD approach. We have an ordinary CPU with a 64-bit register that holds one number. Or we'll have three registers. And we'll have eight-bit numbers in RAM. So we have eight, eight, byte, eight lots of eight-byte, one-byte numbers. Um, and we'll fill that so we'll have an input array. So these are some arbitrary numbers. Say there were low-level pixel intensities, and we want to improve the overall intensity by, say, two. So we'll preload into register two the value two. And then we'll load, we'll perform a regular load from the first element of the input array from RAM and put it into register one on the ordinary CPU. And then we perform a regular addition. You know, we have the result stored in register three and we'd have that register three save into the result array, the first element of the result array. We'd repeat that for the other uh, seven elements. And so overall, we're looking at an operation count of eight loads, eight additions, and eight saves. Okay. So with the SIMD approach, single instruction multiple data approach, and data parallelism, we have a SIMD CPU where one 64-bit register acts as eight 8-bit eight registers. We have our same original array, but we'll see this, this emulating of a register, of the 64-bit register with eight smaller ones. So we have our, the same original input array. We, we, instead of having one two, we tile the twos across the set register two. And we perform a SIMD load, load all, the, uh, load all the elements in one go, perform a SIMD add, and store the result in R3, also over one instruction, and then do a SIMD save and save that back to the result. OK, so overall, we have an operation count of one load, one addition, and one save. So it's one eighth of the operations, um, or an 88% improvement. OK, so there's our drive. If we can improve a, co a commonly used operation like this, make, make eight times faster code potentially, depends on the data types we're dealing with. And uh, faster code should imply that the pro program finishes quicker, and then th therefore the device can idle, and you know, if it finishes a task, it can I idle, the cores will scale back, and it should save battery life, so we can improve battery life on these ARM devices. And also fewer operation, in cycle, uh, fewer operation cycles, um, implies that, uh, so if you have fewer instructions per pixel, we can improve battery life also. So if compilers can do, so compilers can do this for you if you just use GCC or G++ minus O3 minus F3 vectorize. So why should us, uh, why, why should we as developers bother about uh, looking at these lower level intrinsics? Okay, so what is NE10 and NEON? So it's basically SIMD for ARM pro from the ARM processor architecture. It's uh, similar to streaming SIMD extensions, SSE from Intel, but there's no one-to-one -one mapping between SSE to NEON instructions. Um, okay, so NE10 and NEON, there are intrinsic libraries. Okay, so NEON. NEON is a wide SIMD data processing architecture with 60, uh, with 32-bit registers, um, 32 registers, 64 bits wide, or in dual view, you can use 16 registers that are 128-bit wi bits wide. Um, Neon instructions can perform packed SIMD processing. The registers are considered, uh, are considered as vectors of elements of the same data type. Data types can be signed, unsigned, 8-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit, you know, single precision float, whatever. Uh, and they can be used with a simple hash include in your C code. NE10, on the other hand, it's really recent. So Neon was started in 2008. NE10, uh, out of ARM, it was started in 2012. It's a C framework of functions made up of pre-rolled NEON intrinsics. Uh, it provides a higher level of abstraction over NEON. It's easier to use and there's less to think about from a programmer's perspective. But there's, there's a major limitation, or one of two. Um, it operates only on floating point C or C++ pointer arrays. So instead of intrinsic vectors where the programmer has to deal with you know, uh, SIMD registers, uh, vectors. So we, that can also be included with a simple you know, hash include. Okay. So let's, let's try for a demo. <laughs> I'll be game. Uh, okay, so I'll basically walk you through uh, the different approaches. So first, so we'll do the same add that we followed in the first example. Um, but, so adding two to each element. 
but um, we'll see what a compiler do, could do with auto vectorization. So it'll try to develop uh, neon intrinsics um, and see how well that performs against using any 10 to do the same operation. Um, any 10 with stepping, where we where we arbitrary arbitrary say we'll step through this many elements at a time. Um, so. And we'll also look at Neon and then see how they perform running, running on an Android platform. Okay, so basic demo. So we have an Android JNI function called do all the things. Um, we have return strings, not important. Okay, so we'll operate on 4,096 elements at once. And we'll do this a thousand times to give us an average sort of runtime. Okay, so this, so these are sources just setting the register. It's not time, so it's okay. So we'll set our input source array as one to 4,096. And then this is how you normally do it in C, you know, ignore the ugly code. It's, you know, the dest is equal to the source plus, plus two. Um, okay, and we time it. Um, this is using any 10. We can see, so add C, float C, dest source, Add, add two and the number of elements. And this NE10 intrinsic should call a pre-rolled set of neon intrinsics uh, to do the operation for us. So we'll see if there's any speed up factor there. Um, also, if, if NE10 were to operate on all these elements at once, let's, let's, let's try to break it up into smaller parts. So we'll try, say we'll try to operate on, so if our cache size, uh, if our register size on, on uh, our, our processor is, say, 64 bits. Um, let's operate on eight 8 bit values at a time. So we'll step through eight elements in one, uh, one go. So we'll break it up with a for loop. So that's stepping. And then here are our neon instructions, neon intrinsics to do the same operation. So we can see there's a, uh, we, we, we load, load for 32 bit uh, uh, floats. And uh, we will duplicate, as, as you saw in the um, initial example, we'll duplicate that, fill it with twos across the four, and then perform the add and then store the result. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Let's see if... Okay, do we have the camera? Okay, so this is a really spectacular demo. It'll take uh, uh, not very long, so let's have a go. Um, so I just press the, the button and it'll just run through that. So this is called through the JNI, and that's it. So we can see, in this case, auto vectorization took uh, 32 microseconds. Any 10 with no stepping took 28 microseconds. And with stepping, so with the extra for loop, it's uh, 30, 34 microseconds. As opposed to neon, which took 13. <laughs> so there's a pretty compelling case to drop, drop looking at any 10 right here because uh, if, if the compiler, you know, GCC 4.6.3 um, can perform a better, can do a better job than using any 10 intrinsics, we should really stop uh, looking at it. Um, so, uh, so we run it again. We see pretty similar sort of results. Autos 23, any 10s 23, steppings 25, and again neon took 13 microseconds. Can you make any bigger? Bigger? Um, The bigger, better. Focus. Can we see that? Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So a pretty compelling pay case to stop looking at neon right now. Uh, Any ten right now. Okay. Um, Oh, sorry. Should check that. <laughs> okay, so no more any 10. It doesn't show much speed up, if any. Some cases it does, but you know. Um, only supports floating point precision. Whoops. Um, and, and any 10, as I said before, only supports floating point precision. So we should o we should really only be looking at using neon as. Um, we can see that auto vectorization in any 10 is non-optimal when we compare it to the neonized results. 
Um, so we'll look at a few different test uh, different types of test hardware for some graphs. So we'll be comparing how SSE2 compares against uh, Neon intrinsics. Okay, so we can see we have a range of different Intel processors. Um, we're not especially concerned with them, um, but the so we have the low end Intel processors uh, like Atom, and we have uh, di different la latest end uh, high specking. Um, Intel processors like the Core i7 and i5. Um, and we'll see out of the ARM processors, uh, so out of our possible 10 applications, we have six ARM processors. And three of those, all, so all the Samsungs are running um, Android. And the others are running Linux. And the Linux, Linux distros are compiling with, um, try to get it with the standardized version of uh, libc. Um, and and uh, they'll be running GCC or uh, 4.6.3. And for Android, we can't be too sure, but it's a 4.6 point something. Um, so they do a lot of heavy, heavy optimizations to the GCC compiler. OK. Um, and we still have 32-bit uh, kilobit cache size L1 caches across all the devices. OK. Um, OK. So OpenCV, where to begin? So in Intel intrinsics. So all these SSE uh, intrinsics have been done a lot to OpenCV already. So OpenCV 2.4.0 had 145 SSE2 functions uh, or, or preprocessor operations in 30 files. And by the latest release in 2.4.3, it now has 187 functions in 55 of OpenCV's source files. So um, they're really big intrinsic functions. A lot of work, work's gone into them. Um, so when we look at wh how we should be optimizing the OpenCV library, um, we can look at OpenCV 2.4.0. So we'll look at the history of the development, where it had three NEON functions in two files, and the latest version has six over three. So uh, clearly, we, the open source community, have some catching up to do if we want to imp improve this open source library for, um, for NEON, uh, for ARM-based devices. OK, so a brief structure of the OpenCV. Uh, OpenCV has eight major modules, including Core, Image Proc, Video, Calib 3D, Features 2D, Object Detect, High GUI, and GPU. Uh, and each of these modules are obviously concerned with different functions. Um, so due to the size of OpenCV, let's only consider just the Core and Image Proc modules. Um, so the Image Proc module provides a high-level image processing interface to do operations such as image filtering, but I'll, get, I'll talk about that more later. Um, and the, the core module. So the core module is a compact module defining basic data structures and base, basic functions used by all other modules. So it's responsible, so it's the core. Uh, it's responsible for common matrix operations, vector arithmetic, data type conversions, and other fundamentals. Uh, Intel have identified 36 functions in six files in the core module already, suitable for SIMD. Um, so I I Intel haven't uh, made these optimizations. ITSEs may have, and other open source contributors. But we should be learning from, from candidates. They say these functions are really heavyweight. We should be looking at them and try to develop the neon, neon versions. OK. So conversion, we'll run through a simple example, looking at uh, converting float to short data types. So we know it's a computational bottleneck suitable for SIMD, as ITSEs have already developed an SSE version of it. Um, floating point pixel values are useful for many types, uh, especially in image filtering. So uh, we might do feature detection using floating point numbers, and then, but, but most of the data is stored as uh, whole in integers. Okay. Um, OpenCV's SSE optimizations, again, can show us a way for ARM architectures. And we'll look at the conversion algorithm. So when we look at the conversion algorithm, we'll consider SIMD regions and peak performance the algorithm in C, and the algorithm in SSE, porting to NEON and its performance. OK, so this is what the algorithm looks in C, pretty typical. You want to march across the entire image um, and perform a saturate cast. So the saturate cast is useful for, uh, to c take care of buffer overflow type conditions. So we have this saturate cast short. It'll call, uh, um, So we have a saturate cast short, and uh, that'll call this one, this inline uh, template function, which will perform a CD CV round and convert that float to a signed 32-bit integer, 
and then perform the saturate cast on the short. That's what CB round looks like, and that's the saturate cast on the short. Okay. So, uh, what, what's our theorized um, peak performance? So we have the use of neon with uh, dual view registers, so 16, 16 registers of 128 bits wide and operating on single precision floats, uh, so 32 bits, gives us a peak theoretical speed up of four. Okay? So this is the algorithm in, in SSE on the left. And uh, so we can see we can see a load, load instruction. So we load, load eight, eight bits. Convert them to, uh, where are we? Yeah. So load the first half, load the second half, convert them. So we sign them from float to sign, um, and then we perform a packing operation, which does the interweave for us. So it discards the bottom uh, sixteen significant bits. Uh, whereas if we see the neon version, uh, we load, again, we load four lots of 32. So neon have um, really good data type naming. We don't get that in, uh, so you have to be careful. Uh, in SSE, you don't really have to worry about these data types. Um, so we load four by 32, then we perform a convert. So we sign it to 32 bits, and that's signed. And then we perform a V move, so we shift to drop the lower 16 bits on each each um, element. We do the same with the second half here, and then we do a V combine and then a store. So then we store it as so we combine. Uh, it's not an interweave, but we, we combine the um, short the 16 bit elements in, into one 16 by 8 vector. Okay, so over operating on a 640 by 480 image, um, we can see that in Intel, not surprisingly, are faster for most cases, um, but they are running at a higher frequency rate, um, higher clock speed, and uh, yeah, we can see that the absolute times basically reflect on the architecture, but we can see a big difference between the auto, so auto is um, auto compiled um, using GCC, and we're comparing against the hand intrinsics. So we can see the hand, hand intrin intrinsics are significantly faster. Okay, um, so here's, here's just a, a slide of the um, speed up factors we're dealing with. Um, so that's greater than theorized, um, but it if, if you, uh, we'll, we'll have a look at the assembler in a second, and we'll see that the GCC for ARM-based devices performs really badly um, in, in generating the uh, auto vectorization, and that's why we get this greater than theorized um, speed up factor. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, the SSC left is the hand 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 rolled. And the right is the auto GCC vectorized, um, and we can see that ba basically it's treating. Aside from the, if you just count the number of operations, it's ten verse fourteen. Um, the the auto vectorized is uh, doing additional checks, and it's only treating. Well, it looks like it's calling SSE instructions. It's only operating on one element at a time, so we get a f speed up factor of four. Um, the ARM assembly is operating on eight eight um, elements at a time. And um, where are we? also, it's 14 versus 16 operations, so there's additional checking that occurs. Okay. Uh, so moving on. So I think I'm running out of time. Um, okay. So the image proc module supports linear and nonlinear image filtering, uh, geometrical image transformations, resize, affine and perspective warping, color space conversion, histograms, and much more. Um, so any sort of image processing, basically. Um, so Intel have, have identified 37 um, functions in 10 files with the image proc court module. Um, we'll discuss the, we'll only discuss the image thresholding section and then we'll also skim over some other functions, namely the image filtering engine. Um, okay, so the image proc module, binary thresholding. So binary thresholding is the simplest form of image segmentation. There are five type, different types of thresholding operations within this function. We have um, 
or, or we have uh, we've developed neon in intrinsics for, for each of these functions, but we'll only consider one. Um, so Intel have experienced um, SSE speed up factors of six, and they included in their source code uh, in the OpenCV source code. Um, and also, thresholding is, is um, one of the most uh, fundamental operations in image processing uh, in computer vision. It's, it's a prerequisite to a lot of different types of operations, um, including, say, edge detection. Um, you might use it as a post-process to clean up the image. OK, so we'll look at the binary thresholding algorithm and maybe some SIMD theorized performance and see how, whether the speed ups match to what we expect. Um, OK. So binary thresholding, basically we have each element and so this is the normal implementation and so we march across each element in an image and if the image uh, is less than a certain threshold, we'll set it to zero. If not, we'll set it to the maximum possible value. So we only have two possible pixel intensities. Okay, so if we filled a 128-bit register with eight 8-bit values, so we'll only deal with 8-bit um, values, if no order vectorization is used, so it wouldn't do any sort of optimization, we'd ex expect a speed up, speed up factor of eight. So how does auto vectorization compare? So we see not quite eight because we're using, we are using um, auto vectorization, but we still get a better, better performance boost. Uh, you'll see that the NVIDIA Tegra 3, um, it's running an ARM A15 processor. So we have an interesting um, outlier here, but the, it's attached to the uh, L1. So the neon, um, the neon core is attached to um, the L1 cache, and so I think we get we get a lot of um, discrepancies here with cache misses. So we might might perform four, we might might perform one load and then have cache misses and wait until, so four successive cache misses and have to catch up. Whereas most of these other devices have the, they're running uh, ARM A8 and they'll have, uh, it's attached to the L2 cache. So cache misses aren't such a problem. Um, so we'll just basically go through the image proc filter, filter engine. So um, when performing image filtering, uh, it's a big engine, there's a lot of different sub functions and it's determined by, uh, what, um, so we'll look at the signature of what fort function you call, what data type you're acting on, and we'll, you, you drill down. So we only focus on three different functions, the sim row small vec, um, the sim, sim column vec, and the sim column small vec. And we use Sobel, so we'll just use Sobel filtering and Gaussian blurring operations to test these functions. So I won't go over the, so this is the call tree. Um, and basically it's 60%, uh, in the call tree it's 60% sim row, and the other 40% is sim column operations. Okay, um, and they'll recursively poll. So, it's a, if you were applying a separate, a separable filter, you'd do um, for every one column, you might do um, you know for every column, you'd do a uh, row wise. Okay, so here's the speed up we get. Um, so, um, what's there to say about this? We still get a slight, slight speed up, um, but nothing major. But I, I suppose if you're improving the, the, this fundamental engine, that any speed up is beneficial. Um, okay. Uh, one last demo. Uh, if I show you, uh, so I'll just show you all coming together. So this is a benchmark using, there we go, we see that? Not yet. Okay. Um, so this is applying some of the, uh, uh, so it'll apply the conversion algorithm, um, the image proc module, um, but basically it'll test everything and give us our, give us our runtime factors. Can we see the text? So the average unoptimized runtime is, you know, seconds, 0.2 of a second, and there we are, the speed up of doing this operation using, uh, using Neon is it's 4.2 times faster. Okay, and we also get some binary thresholding, so we'll run through different types of applications. Um, so runtime in seconds, 
0 0.04 a second, and we get a speed up factor of 1.7. So this should go with the results in the table. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. So uh, so summary. We see that using neon reduces instruction cycles. Whoops. Wait again. Ah, okay. Um, which should, should, should improve uh, battery life. Um, it certainly improves performance and, and, and frame rate if we can do more of these operations per second. Um, OpenCV is a big library, and it sees OpenCV uh, is, as the OpenCV maintainer has started neonizing functions, as we saw before. But we really have some more work to do. It's an active area of interest. There's um, ITSI's Tegra optimization paper. They're not releasing any of these optimizations as open, as open source. But they achieve a lot higher speed up factors. But they're also using proprietary tools by, by NVIDIA. Um, OK, so some take home notes. You should always compile with GCC and G++ minus 03. Uh, even though it increases the uh, binary size, we, sh we should get um, faster speed ups. You can use profiler tools uh, to identify critical code sections. Um, we don't always have uh, uh, SSE intrinsics to, to, um, to show us the way to how we should be uh, performing SIMD for ARM processors. And any 10 may speed up bottlenecks. We, we didn't see any there. Uh, so sometimes it's uh, tiny. So they're about equivalent. Um, but it does force vectorization, and it helps restructure the program for a problem, uh, problem for a programmer without going straight into the intrinsics. It would be quite a jump. Um, however, when efficiency is paramount, we can't overlook neon. Um, and it's impractical to neonize everything. Um, it's time intensive to restructure all our C code to neon, but we should be smart about what bottlenecks we do uh, develop neon for. Uh, so all our results can be validated by running our the, these Android apps, um, av available on both on GitHub under the Open Parallel website, and again, all runtimes were generated with GCC 4.6.3 or the Android 4.6.x with minus 03 and auto ve and F3 vectorize. Okay, uh, thanks. Are there any questions? I thought I was running over time, so. Uh, you said earlier on, is it the ne any 10 or the neon, the other one had only floating point support? Yeah, only floating point. Um, yeah, so if you do it, you get double precision when you use the, your method. Have you done any experiments to see what speed ups you get with double? Uh, not really. Um, so, uh, no, no, I haven't done any tests there um, at all. No. Um, I think any ten. I, I, I believe that any ten um, has has support for these du uh, the uh, double precision floating point values, but um, ha haven't haven't compared any yet. Um, anyone else? No? Okay, good. So I, I guess we'll, we, we started over time from de technical difficulties, so uh, I guess uh, stop here. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>